let me take you through a day in my life as an ultrasound technologist, aka sonographer. I'm a registered diagnostic medical sonographer who scans everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything from pregnant women to newborn babies, pediatric patients, and adults. I do all this on a daily basis. I scan everything except the heart. I do not do echo, otherwise known as cardiac exams. I do scan all the scans you will learn in a general and vascular sonography school. From abdominal scans to vascular studies, neuro exams like transcranial Dopplers, pediatric cases, OBGYN, musculoskeletal, and so much more that they don't teach you in school. Everything you will truly learn will be through your lab and your clinical rotations. School is there to help give you a foundation and the lab and clinical is there to help you grow and succeed. Let me start this off by saying the learning never stops and you will always continue to grow your skills and build up your confidence. My confidence came way later in the game, which is normal for any sonographer. So let's get started on my day. I usually start by dropping off my lunch in the break room, grabbing a work phone and checking the schedule to see where I need to go. We are a very busy hospital, so it's important to know who will be scanning where. This is where communication and organizational skills come in. We have the night crew prepare the schedule for the day shift, and since I come early, I have to see if I need to go to the adult or pediatric ER or go upstairs on the floor to scan. We do have procedures, but someone else is usually assigned to them on the day shift. This day, I had to go to the ER, which was what we call usually doing a stat exam. That means it needs to be done right away versus a routine exam, which can be done later, but not in an urgent time frame. Once I get to the ER, I log into the computer and look at the tracker to find out all about my patient why they are here, where they are located, if they got lab work done already, or had any prior exams done to help me get a sense of what I'm getting myself into. I then make sure the room is clean and ready to go for my patient, and I go get them from wherever they're located. And usually I hope that I can get them by a wheelchair. Some people are in rooms already, so I'd have to go portable with my machine, and others can be in a hallway bed, so I would transport them to my room in their gurney. Luckily, my patient was in the waiting room, so I was able to bring them in a wheelchair. My first exam that I did was a pelvic exam. This exam is to assess the uterus, ovaries, cervix, and the area around the ovaries. We call this the adnexal regions. We look on top of the belly, which is called transabdominal, and sometimes we have to look internally, which is called transvaginal. Since I used a transvaginal probe, I had to disinfect and sanitize the probe with our trophon unit right after I performed the exam. You will be washing your hands using hand sanitizer and using gloves a lot in this career. After I put the transvaginal probe in the trophon unit, I went over the images, I wrote up my tech worksheet, and tech worksheets are something that only sonographers really know about. Sonography is one of the only modalities that writes up a tech report. We write up these tech reports with all of our information and findings for the radiologist. I'll show you an example of how I wrote up my tech worksheet. What sonographers do is describe what they see, whether things look normal or abnormal to us. It is a lot of anatomy to know, which is why knowing your normal anatomy is so important in this field. Because we are really good at knowing normal anatomy, we are able to spot something abnormal if, for the lack of better words, something looks weird or off to our eyes. Now the doctor is there to look at the images and diagnose the patient from our findings, our tech report, and their overall knowledge. So it's important we give accurate information and get all of the patient history that we can. We are depended on by the doctors and are usually referred to as the doctor's eyes. So if we don't see it, they don't see it. They ask us questions and depend on our images that we take to help diagnose patients. And because of this, I'd say we're kind of a big deal. 
So when you hear ultrasound is easy and one of the least stressful jobs, think again. As the day goes on, physicians from the ER and the rest of the hospital keep on ordering exams. This is why it tends to get really busy in a hospital setting. We're open for 24 hours and patients come and go at random times. Each exam varies with the amount of time you'll spend with the patient. You can take anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes with each patient. Some exams are harder than others and some exams may take a much longer time to do. Remember, you're not just scanning patients. You're obtaining history from them. You're helping them onto the bed or assisting them with help in any way that they need. You're cleaning your machine and you're cleaning your room. You're writing your tech reports and there's so much involved being a sonographer. You are most importantly providing excellent and quality patient care and treating everyone the way you'd want someone to treat you or your family member. My coworkers are off scanning patients portably in the hospital, meaning at the patient's room bedside because depending on where you work, ultrasound does have a lot of walking and pushing the machine. Meanwhile, I'm still taking care of the ER stats. It typically stays busy in the ER. So I have to look again at the tracker, see where my next patient is, look up their history and previous exams, see why they are here and ask them all about their concerns. I'll perform the scan, which are most commonly in the ER abdomen exams for belly pain, pelvic or pregnancy exams for vaginal bleeding or cramping, and leg ultrasounds to check for blood clots. A lot of the patients we see in the hospital are usually people who are having so much pain, usually from gallstones, kidney stones, and unfortunately, miscarriages or having a lot of fibroids, things like that that cause a lot of pelvic pain. After each patient, I clean the room and machine and it's pretty much just like that on repeat until I go to lunch and then I come back to scan wherever I'm needed. Sometimes I'll bring a patient in a gurney to my room and sometimes I'll have to bring my machine portable. Sometimes I have to go to the pediatric ER and sometimes I have to walk all the way to labor and delivery. Other times I'll go to the floor to scan. No day is the same and every patient is different. You never know what kind of exam you're going to get or what kind of patient you're going to meet. Subscribe to my channel for more videos on ultrasound and life as a sonographer.